Hello everyone, um, welcome to the School Improvement Council discussion prompt for your um, Council Discussion 5, which is on interventions updates. Uh, my name is Sue Reynolds, I'm president of the American Student Achievement Institute. And uh, once again, it is our pleasure to uh, welcome you to another School Improvement Council meeting and to thank you on behalf of your steering team in your school um, and on behalf of our staff for serving on the council. Um, as we look at raising student achievement in Indiana, we know that when we have this um, vast pers variety of perspectives at the table in these discussions, it really makes your, um, your discussions rich and, and, and valuable. So thank you, thank you, thank you. So okay, well let's get started. First of all, we'll do a quick review. Remember the first semester of this year, um, you were looking at the implementation of your current school improvement plan. So um, you looked at all of the interventions that you had planned last year for this year, and this year you've been implementing them. And then second semester, you've been working on creating next year's school improvement plan. So that's what we're doing right now. And actually, this is your final discussion in helping your school to do that. So the question is, given who we are now, and the new student data that we have, what adjustments do we need to make in our school improvement plan? So in January, we looked at making adjustments to your goals. Um, and we set um, and reestablished um, your achievement goals for next school year. And then your last discussion was on updating your root causes. So you looked at all of your goals. Some of your goals may have been brand new goals. And you ask the question, well, what's getting in the way of those goals? Why aren't we achieving those goals right now? What's blocking this achievement? And so you came up with root causes or those areas that are impacting achievement um, in, in your targeted in your targeted targeted achievement goals. So now that we know what's getting in the way, now this month we want to update your interventions. There may be some interventions that you no longer need because they're, they're, they've already fixed the root cause, um, so we don't need them anymore. Um, there may be other interventions that you thought were going to be great, and they weren't. They did not bring about the results um, that you wanted them to bring about. Um, and there may be some interventions that were wonderful, and you're deciding um, we want to continue them exactly as written, or there may be some that you want to continue but revise. So we're going to look at all of your interventions this month and then um, and kind of evaluate them. And then we will um, also look at adding possibly new interventions if you need them. So this is the last discussion. And at the end of this discussion, your uh, steering team will be, have the information that they need from you to create a list of interventions for next year. And then they'll send those out to you for, for, your, um, for your feedback. Um, after you have your interventions all set, then your steering team in April and May will start the preparation for implementing those interventions, specifically the professional development that's needed to enable your teachers or your counselors or whoever to implement those interventions with integrity. So in the preparation, they'll be developing a plan for professional development, an implementation calendar, and if there's materials or other resources that they need for that intervention, they'll be figuring out how they're going to get those. So that will be happening in April and May. That will finish up your school improvement plan, and you'll be ready to uh, put that into, into action next year. Okay, so as you know, we have products that come out of all of our discussions with you. Right now we have three products in, in your school improvement plan. Based on the input that you gave to your steering team, uh, we have a vision statement, we have your achievement goals identified, and we have your root causes identified. And so again, today we're looking at interventions, the action part of this. What are we going to do about it? So let's talk about interventions um, to just kind of give you a little bit of background in them. So first of all, a, a definition is that interventions are those things that address um, the things that we've identified as getting in the way of student achievement. So they address your root causes that you worked on last month. 
Now, your interventions may be general or specific, and this is really important. So I, I really want to make sure that as council members you understand the difference between the two. So a general intervention impacts a general root cause. Um, so something that's going to, it's a root cause that's going to impact all achievement areas, like, um, like there's not a good attendance policy, or students across the board are not engaged in the classrooms, or you don't provide, your school doesn't provide any extra help um, for kids when they're struggling. You know, those kinds of things impact all subject areas, all standards, um, and so they're very general. So when we put a general intervention in place, it's also going to impact your school in a very broad way. It's going to impact all subjects, all standards, because it's a general root cause, and we need then a general intervention. On the other hand, a specific intervention will impact a specific root cause. So we're looking at a root cause that's specific to a subject area or a standard or something that's very specific in the school that's getting in the way. And so your interventions for a specific root cause are not going to impact all achievement across the board. It's only going to impact achievement that's related to the root cause. So if you put in a math intervention, that's not going to impact language arts. Um, so, so in a school, in order to raise achievement, we really need both kinds of interventions. We need to look at what's happening in a general way, um, and you did that through your, your general root causes, and then what's happening specifically um, in our, for our, our specific um, achievement goals in our specific root causes. So as we look at your interventions, you should be able to point to some that are general and some that are specific. Okay, now the other thing we want you to think about today as you're looking at interventions is that there are some interventions that have more impact than others. We tend to label those as high impact inside, high impact outside, and low impact. So a high impact inside intervention is something that's going to happen inside the classroom and it's going to um, you know, really focus on how things are being taught, what's being taught. It's, you know, if we think about inside the classroom, what are the teachers doing and what are the students doing? When we impact those things, that's high impact. We can have a lot of bang for the buck if we can impact what's happening inside the classroom. So here are some examples, just aligning a math curriculum standards, having a series of lessons on ratios, a uh, teacher who's using differentiated instructions so that we're engaging students. You know, those are all things happening inside the classroom and it's big bang for the buck. Then there are some high impact um, interventions that happen outside of the classroom. Um, for example, a math club might provide tutoring, it's happening after school. It tends to be lower impact because it, for most outside the classroom initiatives, uh, participation by students is voluntary. Um, you know, it's not happening when we have kids in the classroom. Um, but they can be high impact. So, um, so we just want to make you aware of that. It doesn't have to be inside a classroom to be high impact. A low impact um, uh, in intervention tends to be things that I like to think of these as feel-good interventions. Um, there are things like, you know, purchasing book bags for the kids. You know, you can give every kid in the building a book bag, but if you're teaching third grade content to your sixth graders, it's not going to make a difference. So, um, you know, community mentor program, I mean, those are wonderful programs, but again, if your kids are in the classroom and they're disengaged because the instruction isn't engaging, it's not going to make a difference that they, you know, that they have these mentors. So there are some um, initiatives that actually a lot of schools kind of lean towards because they're, um, they're, they're, because we don't have to invite a teacher to do something differently. We're just, they tend to be add-on activities. So we add on a mentor program, we add on book bags. Um, but if we really want to impact achievement, then we're looking at what happens inside the classroom. So, okay. Then, another thing to consider as you're looking at your interventions is that some interventions take a lot of time and energy. Um, they, they engage all educators in a major way. There are others that are medium energy. They engage many edu 
they will engage um, many educators but not all in a major way. There's low energy interventions with that um, just, inter just engage a few ed educators in a major way or all educators in a minor way. And, and then there's a, another um, type of intervention that we call low energy continuation. And that's an intervention that used to be high energy, um, but now it's low because it has been in place for a while. So maybe differentiated instruction when you first did it, when the school first did it, and they were having lots of professional development and, you know, all of that, it was high energy. But now that we've been doing it for several years, it's just kind of routine and it's, it's low energy. So when your steering team enters the interventions into our online system, they're going to identify for each intervention the energy level for that intervention. And that will help you and us um, all think about, are we spreading the teachers in this building too thin? Are we asking them to do so many new things, so many high energy things, that everything's going to get done in a mediocre way? So it's something we want to pay attention to. And as a council member, especially if you're from the community, um, you know, we really want you to be sensitive to are we asking uh, the teachers to do too much so that we're just spreading them too thin. So, okay. So, here's the discussion prompt. What we want to know is what will your school and your community, so both of those, your interventions can be happening in your community too. So your, your faith-based organization could do a, an intervention, your business could do an intervention, uh, service club could help with the interventions. Um, so, but what it, the discussion is, what will your school do and what will your community organizations do to address your root causes? And here's how this is going to work. So as a pre-meeting task, we asked you to print a copy of the root causes intervention crosswalk. So you can see on this crosswalk down the left side, um, and this is what you discovered when you did your, your, this task at home. Um, here are all of your interventions, and here are the root causes. And what we asked you to do was to just put a letter um, next to each of the interventions to say if we should keep it, revise it, omit it, or we're not sure. So, um, so let's just look at these. Let's say the first one here is the seventh grade ratios unit. So maybe as you've looked at this and um, as you've, if you're a teacher, you've, you've talked with the math teachers, you know that everything's going great. So for you, this is a keeper. If you're a community member, you may not know. So this might be an end for you. Attendance mentors, you look at that and you're thinking, okay, absenteeism was one of my root causes. That seems to be working well. Um, and um, so it's a keep. Math club is a revise. And... Um, and actually, one of the schools that we worked with made, made Math Club a revision because it was working so well that they decided not to do it after school anymore. They decided to embed it in the school day so that they could capture um, more kids. Um, but we see when we look at that that there's, you know, there's two root causes that, that, that Math Club is addressing. Um, on the next one, the curriculum guide update, um, add ratios to the list of seventh grade math topics, that was completed. So we can omit that. We don't need that one anymore. It's, it's done. Parent night, keeper, uh, phone call to home about students or absence. Maybe you don't know if that's happening or not or how well it's going, so we're just putting an N in there. So among all of your council members, there's going to be folks who have information about these um, that will help everybody think about, as you discuss them, um, what's, a, what's a keeper, what's a revision, what's an omit, and what's a um, not sure. So, okay, so that was the first, first part of your pre-meeting task. And then the second part was to think about, do we need new interventions? And we asked you to look for new interventions in case your school started to go down that road. Um, and you looked at five different sources for um, uh, intervention ideas. And there were tens of thousands of interventions that have been entered into our, on, our online system that you were able to search uh, for, uh, for possible interventions around your root causes. So one last thing on the screen is please remember that we're not just doing an intervention because it's cool or it's fun or, you know, the school next door is doing it or um, we read something about it in a professional journal, but we're doing it because it aligns with our root causes. So make sure always that your interventions are aligned with your school's root causes that you identified last month. 
Okay, so here's the prompt. Kind of the same thing. We're, what we're going to do is, you're, in a minute you'll pause the slide, uh, pause the presentation, and then the rest of this uh, meeting will be facilitated by your steering team members. And what we'd like to do is to um, ask you to look at this Root Causes Interventions Crosswalk, and one at a time, your steering team will say, okay, first of all, let's start out with seventh grade ratios unit. What was your thinking about that? And they'll give you an opportunity to say, you know, we, we think that's a keeper, or, um, you know, we don't think we need that anymore. Let's revise that one. And then after you go through all of those and give the everybody your thoughts and everybody's kind of sharing um, about those, um, about how they feel about these, um, then you'll go to the next question, and again, your, your steering team will lead you through this, and basically then you'll be saying, do we need any new interventions? And, you know, you may be thinking, gosh, you know, our attendance has gone up, but with these two interventions, it's not gone up enough. And now that we've got these two going, let's add on another one. Or especially if this one's not working and we're taking it out, now what are we going to do? Um, the other reason you might need new interventions is if you have a brand new root cause that you've not worked on before, and then you really do need interventions to, um, to make that happen. So, um, so you're just going to brainstorm, do we need new interventions, and if so, what should we consider? Um, so then any of the ideas, let me go back a slide, any of the ideas that you came up with at home um, when you looked at those different um, sources, those ideas you, you throw out and talk about at, um, um, during your meeting that the steering team is about to facilitate. Um, and then finally, the st steering team is going to ask you, okay, here's the interventions that we came up with. Um, can we live with them and can we support them publicly? So you don't have to love them, um, but you have to kind of believe in them. You know, can we live with these? And if you're in the grocery store or at your faith-based organization or at a ball game and someone's saying, you know, what's up with that intervention? Could you explain, you know, what, what, why it was needed and, and would you feel comfortable sticking up for it? Um, so, so yeah, so I will leave this um, slide up and what I would suggest that you do is just pause the presentation here and, um, and have this discussion. And then when you're finished with this discussion, which will take some time, uh, you know, you may be on this slide having this discussion for an hour or more, then come back and, um, and then we'll finish up the, um, the rest of the, the, the presentation. Okay, welcome back, and um, great, we've had this discussion about the, um, your interventions and what interventions you should have in place for next year. So um, just a couple things. After today, your steering team is going to consider your input, um, but the other thing that they're going to do is, and they'll create a preliminary list of interventions, but then what they're going to do is they're going to look at all of these requirements that people outside of the school have of your school. So your steering team is going to look at several crosswalks. If you're a Title I school, if you're a focus or priority school with the Indiana Department of Education, there are requirements that you have to feel, fulfill as a, as a school in terms of the interventions that you put in place. So the steering team is going to check all of your interventions and um, then they're going to um, uh, look at, um, to make sure that, that it's met all of the required interventions um, outside of your school. And, and some of you probably, the light bulb is going off, the required interventions may not line up with your root causes. So, but because there is somebody outside your school mandating that your school does it, we have to put those interventions in to make sure that you're compliant with state expectations. Um, okay, and then um, for those of you who are focused in priority schools, which are lower achieving schools in Indiana, um, we're also, your school will um, talk with a consultant from the Department of Ed who will also be um, helping them select interventions to get their input, uh, input as well. And why I want you to understand this as a council member is that the work that you do today may end up being tweaked a little bit. You may some, see some additional interventions that you didn't talk about at all today. And, and that's why, because we're, your school, in addition to doing 
what is right based on your students' data and your root causes, your school also has to meet these outside expectations. So if you see new interventions or, or some have been tweaked a little bit, um, just be understanding that that's why we had to meet these external expectations. Okay, and then finally, um, after the, everything's kind of finished, the steering team will send a list of interventions to you. And, um, and then when we have everything kind of all set, they will also send the intervention list to all the educators in the school, and they're going to ask those educators to indicate um, that they are aware of the, of the interventions that will be implemented next year and that they support the interventions in concept. Um, if there are teachers who don't, under, who don't support the interventions, then we want to have a chance to talk with them and, and help them understand the strength of the intervention and why we're doing it and what it means in terms of their involvement. And, um, you know, we want, we want to answer any questions that they have ahead of time so that when we get to the point of implementation next year, we can just hit the ground rolling. Um, and we'll do that as soon as the school year starts. So, so that's the conclusion um, of this uh, video for um, the council members. And again, thank you very, very much uh, for, um, for participating in your council. Um, it makes your school improvement plan have so much more impact when it's designed with, with a lot of different perspectives um, coming to the table. So thank you very much. And this is the last discussion for this year. So um, thanks for, so much for participating in the discussions all year. So very good. And um, thanks very much.